like when you look at the alternative setting, only five percent of these kids graduate with a high school diploma. So, so, so that's like one major issue you have to mm -hmm. you have to deal with. So you have to ask yourself, okay, well, why are only five percent graduating with a high school diploma? Five percent of the whole population. You're listening to It's Larry G Radio, a podcast centered around story, motivation, and learning. Hosted by me, Larry G. I'm a photographer, filmmaker, musician, content creator, and marketer. Here, you'll find a mix of my YouTube and Instagram show episodes, thoughts on marketing and business, interviews and chats I've had, and much more. Today on the podcast, we have Mr. Alaric Woodard. I actually met Alaric when I was doing Vince's interview. He noticed that we were talking and I was recording the conversation because I had my camera set up. We talked for a while about this project, and Alaric said that he'd like to be a part of it to share the story of his book, My Only Alternative. What's your name, and uh, what are you here to talk about today? My name is Alaric Woodard. Um, I'm actually here today to talk about my book. Um, it's titled My Only Alternative, The Great Exchange. And just to share some insight on my experience in working in an alternative school setting and just want to share some light on that and kind of give my story. Okay. Well, go ahead and tell your story. Um, okay. Um, well, how the book came about, I started working with, um, I worked with alternative kids probably about four years and I worked um, in the high school alternative setting probably about three of those years, two and a half, three years. And as I began to work in that setting, like it's a lot of things that I began to notice and recognize that just, you know, I didn't feel it should go the way that it did. A lot of things that happened on a daily basis was just things that should not took, should not have took place in the school setting. You know, and, um, you know, I noticed that it didn't really have any structure, uh, like kids wasn't really, you know, receiving what they should receive. So, you know, uh, I believe God began to swell things in my heart as far as, you know, like my passion to see things change. And just, you know, like over time, you know, uh, things just began to come to me and I began to, you know, just, you know, write about it. And uh, that's how I came up with this book. So. Okay. Uh, you know, in, in, in doing that, though, I began to see uh, from the, you know, I, I pretty much deal with the physical aspect and the spiritual aspect because you can't really deal with the person just physically. You also have to deal with them from the spiritual aspect because we, you know, we, we are spiritual beings, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way that God made us, you know, body, soul, and spirit, you know. So, uh but what, how, how I came up with this, um, as I deal with the physical aspect, I just, like I said, began to, you know, show how they should have different interventions and different resources and different things that should be available for them that's technically there for them according to state law that they should be entitled to. But they don't actually get these things, you know. Now, mm -hmm. some of the things they do get, but... It's, it's, for example, like um, like according to um, the state law, it, it says that alternative students should receive at least one career or vocational certification option. And they give them the career option, which is customer service. Mm -hmm. But the reality of that is, is that what would be a greater option for them is the vocation, the technical, the hands-on training. Where they if they can do something like welding, auto mechanics, you know, wood shop, paint body, like something that they can do to take an actual skill back into society and be productive citizens. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that you can't make money with customer service, but we have to look at the type of kids that we're dealing with and the type of environment that most of these kids live in. And you know, like I said, customer service, I'm not saying there's nothing they can't use, but I don't think that it's the most effective. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas I know if a kid can well, 
like they can make, you know, 25, you know, $26 an hour welding. Mm-hmm. Whereas you're not gonna make that kind of money doing customer service. Right, and it's like you they're know? only giving them the one option and not the two that they deserve. Yeah, well, yeah. Like they're not giving them the two. Whereas the customer service is one option, but if you give them vocational training, that's multiple options. Right. You know, you have several things that they should be able to pick and choose from that they can take part of. Right. But but that's not the case. You know, uh, uh, as well, like the alternative setting should be funded and supported at the same level as traditional schools. But that's that's not actually taking place in regards to them receiving the help that they that they need. Um, you say alternative kids. What is what would you consider an alternative kid? So so according <clears throat> to like what we see in, in you know with Louisiana, like the alternative the alternative school is pretty just pretty much just like uh, a setting that's provided for kids. The setting that I worked in it was provided for kids who have been expelled or put on a long term suspension from their traditional school. But within that school, they should have a non-traditional curriculum and methods for the students that's outside of the traditional way. You know, so that's what the kids should be provided with. So actually, like these kids are supposed to be provided with the curriculum and the methods that work for them. Mm -hmm. You know, so that makes it like, you know, different from your traditional setting because, right. you know, it's, everything is kind of, you know, tailored to being done a certain way. But in an alternative setting, it, it don't supposed to actually be a way that is actually tailored for the whole, but more so, you know, for the individual, like for the need of like that, those, that group of students. Right. Yeah. The way I'm thinking about it is it kind of relates to um, what people think correctional facilities are versus what a prison is. So, like, people go to correctional facilities for intervention and rehabilitation, and that's mm-hmm. kind of what these kids, these kids are going to the alternative schools to help with the things that are getting them into trouble and kind of yeah. to intervene them. Yeah. And get well, them in the right direction that they can't get at a re- traditional school setting. Yeah, you, you know, but... That's hard to do when you don't have other things, you know, structured in place. Mm-hmm. Like, like for example, like when you look at the alternative setting, only five percent of these kids graduate with a high school diploma. So, so, so that's like one major issue you have to mm-hmm. you have to deal with. So you have to ask yourself, okay, well, why are only five percent graduating with a high school diploma? Five percent out of the whole population. Now. Granted, the population is not a it's, it's it's not a huge population, but the population is big enough to have more than five percent graduate. Like if you look at the school letter grade, it's only thirteen percent. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mean, it's 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 other things that's 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 happening in this setting that's not being dealt with. You know, right. like 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 it's other issues you have to fix. You know, because. If you don't take care of, you know, the, the result of kids graduating, only 5% graduating with a high school diploma, that brings you to the next fact. What are they doing? They're dropping out. Mm-hmm. And most of these kids, when they drop out, a lot of them end up in the streets. They, you know, end up in prison. Some even end up dead. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a repeating cycle that we see taking place with the alternative set. Okay. Um, when you say the kids don't in the alternative schools don't receive what they should, like, um, is it just like structure? Is it education? Is it options? Well, 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 I, I think, I think it's, it's, it's options, you know, as far as I say with the, with the vocational training, like that's an option that, 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 that should be in, in the setting. I mean, as, as well as structure. Because what we see is that a lot of these kids come from backgrounds that has no structure, mm-hmm. you know. So you so they can't leave a, 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 a just say they can't leave the environment, their home, and have no structure. Then come to a school that has no structure, you know. Like where do they begin to 
uh, get the 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 help they need. You know, right. granted, like like I'm not saying everything is on the school. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's two sides to like like you know, each party has have a responsibility. For example, like I couldn't put all of the responsibility on the school to to do everything for my kid and I do nothing. Right? Right. But the 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 reality of it is this. You have some kids who come from very, very damaged backgrounds. You know, but in result of that, I don't think that changed the obligation that the school system has made to students. You know, every student succeeds. You know, no child left behind, you know. Mm-hmm. And all that, that's that's good. But even if you have parents who don't really step up to the plate and do what they should do, I still don't think it changed the obligation that the school has towards the student. Another thing is this, you know, um, like as I've done research, it's, it's, it's according to the U.S. Department of Education, it's for four principles that they bring out in regards to how the alternative setting should be, you know, designed and how it should be, you know, put together. And it's pretty much it like like who 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 does it serves? Mm-hmm. You know, what does it offers? You know, where is it located? And how is it structured? You know, those 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 are things that I that I speak of in my book. Mm-hmm. You know, and I begin to, you know, lay those things out. But what bring me to the 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 other aspect of this is is why a lot of you know kids students not only these alternative students but when you look at them you know all of you know the human race mm-hmm. you know but when you look at alternative students you have to ask yourself well why they do what they do why they act the way they act why they think the way they think why they say the stuff they say well, according to according to what I have learned in the Word of God, it shows that it's because of the sin nature that we all are born into from the time we conceived in our mother's womb. The Bible clearly teaches us that we are all born into sin. You know, like like when I when I when I look into the scriptures, and and I've been I've been looking at this, and I look in Romans five. 12 and 13, and, and, it, and this is what it says. It says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. And that's speaking of, 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 of Adam. Everybody know the story of Adam and Eve. So it says, Where, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. It's everybody, you know. But then it says, For unto the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So what it's pretty much saying is you can't really be charged for something if there is no law in place. But we see in the word of God that Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But the thing is this, we can't keep God's commandments if Christ is not living in us and through us. You know, it, it, it can't be done because the Bible clearly teaches us that it's what proceeds from the heart of a man is what defiles him. You know, so what I began to see in, in working in the setting is that it was things that they was doing, but it wasn't more so what they were doing, but it was what had been done by Adam. It was the fall of mankind from the very beginning, and the effects of that is still being shown throughout human race, throughout, you know, history. You have seen, you know, the, the, the heinous acts that people constantly do on a continuous basis. And that is the things that, that, that bleeds and works from a person's heart. Like when we look in the scriptures, it's very clear. Mark 7 and 21, it says, For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts. Adultery, fornication, murder, thieves, covetousness wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, and all these evil things come from within and defile man. So, I mean, 
it's very clear according to the scriptures that we have to give these kids Jesus. We have to give our youth Jesus. If we don't give them Jesus, the issue can't really and truly be corrected. I mean, I mean, we can deal with the physical aspect of it, which is great and is needed. We need to deal with the physical aspect. But according to the scriptures, it's 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 the heart of a man that has to be addressed. And what we learn through scripture is how that's addressed is 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 through Jesus Christ. You know, so that's that's what I will continually stand on and I will continually proclaim because I know that's the only help and solution that they can truly receive the service from within. You know, like you know, like the Bible just give us the answers to life. <laughs> you know, like the Bible clearly teaches us. Like we see it all through the scripture. Galatians 5, 19. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest. And when you look at the word manifest, it, 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 it speaks of something being obvious, something being very clear. It says being obvious to the, to, to, to the eyes or to the mind. So it's really, it's, it's something that you can't deny because it's very clear and obvious to you that it is what it is. So, but when it speaks of the works of the flesh being manifest, it speaks of those same things, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. So what we begin to see again is that these are the things of the flesh which reflects what's working in our heart. And... We, 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 we learn through the scriptures that Jesus Christ is able to keep us to live a life that's pleasing before God. You know, it's, it's like, and, and I can clear it up right here in 1 John 5. It says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. See how I go back to that again? It says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. See, so when we begin to have a true love for God and the spirit of Christ live in us, it doesn't grieve us to keep God's way. It doesn't grieve us to live godly and to be holy and to do things the way that God has said do it according to his scriptures. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's just very clear. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Man, this is beautiful. <laughs> You know, because this gives me hope and this gives me hope for our youth, because I know without a doubt, if we give our youth Jesus, we give them hope. Mm -hmm. So that's did, the answer. I just have a question. Yes, ma'am. So you grew up in that situation, right? What situation? Like you went, did you go to an alternative? Is that right? You went to an alternative school or you worked in, you worked in one? I, I, I worked in one. Okay, I so you, you, you weren't there as a child. Well, let me say this. I had I had a very like rough background myself. Mm -hmm. Like like my background, I was you know I used to you know get into trouble. I used to get into fights and like all kind of stuff. You know, getting suspended. So like I have ex ex experienced that like rough side of like the school days. You know, and I mean like that within itself. That is another way and that is proof that what I'm saying pertains to the scriptures that it shows and reflects the power of God mm -hmm. because I know the the young person I used to be I know how I used to would be I fight in a minute I do whatever but you know I, I I can't take any credit for the way I live my life now and all of that came to be change as I began to surrender my life to Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, so what I speak of is not something 
that somebody told me is something that I speak of through my own life experience. Right. Yeah. And my question would be with that is, I know what just I know that these kids, they're not all of them have any kind of background in any type of religious mm-hmm. time or you know what I mean, like maybe they've never gone to church on a regular basis. Yeah. So you know, so how I don't know how would you get them to actually get the, their trust in well we're, we're like this like 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 the scripture says faith come by hearing and hearing the word of god mm-hmm. so so it's like this if we can put our young people in the position to at least hear the word of god like would that tell me that if they can at least sit to where they can hear the teachings of jesus what i believe the spirit of god begins to do is stir faith in their heart to where they come to a place to begin to believe by faith. Because mm-hmm. they say faith come by hearing. So if they continue to hear the, 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 the gospel, the teachings of the word of God. I believe that many of them will come to a place to, to believe God's word as it is written. And you will begin to see things take place in their heart that will reflect through their life. Mm -hmm. I believe that. My follow-up question is, I know that there's a thing now where they, it's a separation of religion and school Mm -hmm. or that kind of thing. How do you deal with that if you believe that um, using the word of God is the answer? Like, how do you, how do you, um, how do I say this? Like, bring the two together in a situation where the school system is saying we don't want that here. Yeah, well, I, I I think I think you have to um kind of go back to where you started. Like like for example, like if you if 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 you were look research back, you could see way back in the 17th century in the colonial days, they had a an educational textbook um titled The New England Premier. And with this book This was the first educational textbook that they began to use in schools in America. Now, within this book, they were taught the Lord's Prayer. They were taught pretty much how to read. It it, it has been shown how this was the first educational textbook that actually teach kids how to read in America. You know, to go even further, it shows how the Bible was something that was you know, continuously, you know, use in 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 school. Like school was actually being held in church houses. Like before school became the commonplace, like school was being held in the church. You know, so what I believe is that we just have to go back to where we first started. Like, like, like this is not nothing new. You know, this is not something that's just being introduced. Like, like this country has 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 always you know been known to believe in the principles of God you know but along the way you know I believe that we have allowed other influences to come in and kind of to you know kind of you know diminish that you know I just believe we just need to go back to where we started and put Jesus back in his rightful place which is in our schoolhouses in our homes and everywhere you know just you know, put God where he belongs. Do you think that um, your book will help influence that decision? Or I believe it could have a great impact on it if if people will will be honest and if they will, you know, uh, open their hearts and just allow the Spirit of God to do what he is always designed to do is to reveal truth. I I, I, I believe that this 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 book is 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 something that 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 reveals truth. I believe that it was inspired by the Spirit of God, and I believe if people will look at it for what it is, I believe the only way they can see it for what it is is is, is if they just clearly deny the truth. I think that's the only way a person cannot see what this book says, and the 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 heart of it is to deny truth. Clearly, that's that's the only way they would not be able to see this for what it is. So, 
I'm going to play devil's advocate here. And I know working with youth, especially adolescents, early adulthood, they don't like to be told what to believe in and what to do and all that, like to that extent. Mm -hmm. So if you're working in an alternative school setting and you're trying to teach these kids, what do you do when they don't, when they are, they're just resistant to, like, yeah, like they don't really want to hear right. what you're saying. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think I, I think the first thing that would have to happen is 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 relationship. Mm -hmm. I, I think that as you begin to uh, build a rapport, build a rapport with with the student, I think that that opens up the opportunity to be able to minister, to be able to plant seeds, to be able to share things, mm -hmm. and once you have that. I believe that creates the opportunity to where you can share the seeds of the gospel to where they are more receptive to what you're saying because they trust you and they and, and, and they're open to you. I 100% I agree that I do think that having faith in this type of higher power will get them in a good place in their future, but I do think that it takes quite a long time. Yeah, like, 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 like we, we, we all, we also have to look at this. Like, I believe if we just give them the word of truth, we give them the word of God, but we can't take away the fact that they still have their free will. Mm -hmm. See, 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 that never changes. Like, you can minister and minister and minister and minister to somebody, but they have to make a conscious decision in their heart and their mind to believe what the word of God says. Now, they have to do this by faith. Say faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So as they begin to, to believe God at his word, even though if they're not seeing everything before their eyes, like right in the moment, you still have to trust God at his word and believe by faith. Mm -hmm. so, so what I'm saying is this, like, you know, we are called to 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 share the gospel, to, to, to give the gospel of Jesus Christ, to point people to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, point people to Jesus Christ and what he did for us, and a person have to come to, the, come to a place in their heart to where they believe this by faith. And as they believe God, they begin to experience the power of God in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, so what I believe is that as we give kids if we as we give our youth the, the 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 word of God, I believe that many of them will make that conscious decision to believe God at His word, and they will put their faith in Christ, and you will see many of them get saved. But then you will have some who will hear it, but they are hard their heart to it, and they will never surrender. They just keep you know doing what they're doing. You know that's that's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. You know that's the reality. Of it. But, you know, if, you know, like, I don't think, like, it would be great if, every, if, if, if all our youth would just come to Jesus. That would be awesome. But the, the sad reality of it, of it is, is that we know that that's a possibility that that won't happen. Mm -hmm. But that still shouldn't be to where we don't give it. it we, we have to give it. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to offer it. To where that way that you put them in the best position they could be. To where if they don't embrace it, it's not because they didn't they, they didn't have a chance to. And just let me tell you this, if this makes you feel better about for those people or for those kids who may harden their hearts to this type of thing, I am that person. And I'll tell you that it is still like when I'm in a bad place or trying to make a hard decision, mm -hmm. I mean, the thought of like God is, is in the back of my head, yes, no matter yes, what. So even yes. if they do harden up their heart to that thing and don't have full faith, mm -hmm. it's still, whatever you're saying, is still in the back of their head. Yeah. And, I and, do believe yeah, that. Yeah, and, and, and it, don't have, it don't have to be that way. It's a conscious decision we make on our own. That's, that, that's the reality of this because we have a free will. We have a free will to do life however we choose to. God give us that. It's, it's ours. We can do what we want with it. So, you know, I, I, I just think that, you know, we still have to put our young people in a position to choose life 
and not dead. Mm-hmm. Alaric has more to say, but I want to take this moment to thank you for listening to the podcast. I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. If you're enjoying the show, consider sharing it with someone you think will benefit. The next segment you hear is a continuation of the conversation Alaric and I had after the entire interview. We thought that some of the comments needed a little clarification. We did this part in a different location, so the sound may be a little different. After the clarification, the interview resumes as normal. Thanks for understanding. Just to kind of uh, just clarify um, something in the scripture, Jesus says in uh, John 14 and 15, saying, if you love me, um, keep my commandments. And, you know, he he said this because if you look at Matthew 5 and 17, it says, think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy the law. I'm not come to destroy but to fulfill, you know. So, so what you see in that is, what you see in that is how Jesus was, he was the fullness of the law, you know, and the only way we can truly, you know, keep God's way and keep God's order and live according to the scriptures is by our faith in Christ, Christ keeping the law through us. See, that's why we had, that's why, when Jesus, you know, gave, when, when, when God gave the, the Ten Commandments to Moses in Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments was like a mirror to show man what was working in his heart. And then nobody was able to keep the law because every person that would attempt to keep the law, they would always break the law. So what it showed man is that we are sinners in need of a savior. Mm. which is Christ you know so when Jesus says this in 17 said that he that he come not to destroy the law but to fulfill because he was the fulfillment of the law so uh just you know I, I, I just want to uh you know just kind of put some clarity to that what, what, what we come to learn through the word of God is that that the, the, the life that we live here on earth that we we one day will give an account for. You know, like 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 I can remember uh one day me and one of my old co-workers, we uh you know I had seen him in, at, at the hospital and uh, we were sitting having a discussion and um, you know I just began you know to share my faith with him and in, in doing that he, he, he made the statement, he said, well, he said, that's what you believe. He said, who's to say what, what I believe is not the truth or what the next person believes is not the truth. He said, that's your truth according to what you believe. But who's to say that that's, you know, the truth. And, you know, he, he had a very good point. But my question to him was this. I asked him, I said, well, what's the one thing that we all can agree on no matter what we believe and no matter what truth that we stand on, no matter what we, you know, live our life by. Like, what's the one thing we all can agree on? And the one thing we all can agree on is that we all are gonna die. Like, we all gonna leave this earth. Like, we all gonna check out. So, my question to him was, you know, uh, the Bible, says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that's if you are in Christ Jesus. So my question was, what are you willing to put on? Because what's at stake is, you know, your soul. It said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? It's nothing we can you know, give an exchange for our soul. It's nothing that we can gain on this side of heaven to 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 take the place of our of our soul. So, you know, it, it, it bring me back, you know, to you know to the scriptures where if you look in, you know, Daniel twelve and two, it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake 
some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So, 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 so what you see is that everyone, everyone will, 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 will one day have to, you know, give an account for how they have lived life. And what you see in the scriptures, how it says, some, some to everlasting life is some to shame and contempt. When you look at the word contempt, you know, it's like, it, you know, like, like it, it, it makes me think about the judge, the judge say, if you do that again, you're held in contempt, you know, because the judge have the authority and the judge have the right to, to hold you in contempt for being disrespectful and for disregarding a law that's in place that you break, you know, so the judge can say, okay, you had the contempt. I sentenced you to, you know, 30 days in prison. Mm -hmm. The judge can make that call and there's nothing that can be done to change it. You know, I, I, I said that to say, because when we, because when we look in the scriptures, we see that once again in, in, in um, 2 Corinthians 5 and, and, and 10, it says, for, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It didn't say some, it didn't say a few, <laughs> it said all. It said, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he done whether it be good or bad. So, um, at the end of the day, we all will have to give an account for how we live our life, whether it be good or whether it be bad. That is why I know that there's so many things that our young people need help with. There's so many areas they need help in. But I know that the, 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 the ultimate solution to transform their life is Jesus, according to the scriptures. It has changed my life. I have seen it change countless others' life. And I know Jesus Christ is the only person that can change their lives as well. Tell me about the title of the book. The title? Title was my, my, my only, excuse me, my only alternative. Now, some people look at it and say, man, I, you spelled that wrong, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> I didn't spell it wrong. The point of the title is altar, like the altar of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, because we see that the altar is a personal place. It's a you know a place where we lay down our burdens, to where we you know we we lay down our hurts, our pain, our praise, our worship. We lay it all down at the altar. You know, so what we see is that. Jesus is my only alternative. He's the only option. He's the only source of life. <laughs> He's everything, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and how I get my subtitle is the great exchange. You know, me giving Christ my sin and taking his righteousness. The great exchange. What I would like to do, I, I, I would like to uh, share very briefly in the book of, you know, my experience when, um, you know, before... I got saved before I, you know, came to give my life to Christ. You know, um, I would just like to briefly share that of how I wrote it in the book. That's okay? Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is what I say. I say, I can remember a time when I was lost, broken, bruised, and battered. Fortunately, in the year 2000, I found that treasure, the Lord Jesus Christ. I was working at a job doing custodial work. My supervisor was a man of God who loved Jesus. One day while we were sitting in the back of a supply truck, he looked up and asked me if I had made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I could have easily replied to him by simply saying yes, but as I began to think and reflect over my life, absolutely nothing about it looked like Jesus. I knew the church talk and how to look good on the outside, but on the inside, I was a complete mess. As I pondered the question for a few minutes, I replied, no, I haven't made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. He offered to pray with me a prayer of faith and gave me the opportunity to truly embrace Jesus Christ as Lord. I then repented for my sins and placed my faith in the death, 
burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. At this point, I was now saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And 1 Peter 1 and 18 through 19 says, For you know God paid a ransom to save you from, your, from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which loses their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb. Jesus then began to place his hand on things in my life that didn't look like him, because in those things, I could not live up to God's standard. You must know that God has a standard because he is holy. God does not accept anything less than holiness. Therefore, he allows certain things to happen in our lives to bring forth what he does accept. I couldn't stay the same because the spirit of Christ now lived in me. Everything in and around my life started to change. From the places I went to, the, the people I hung with, the music I listened to, all the way down to the conversations I would entertain. Jesus began to show himself as a true treasure in my life by being more valuable than anything I had ever known. Jesus Christ, the pattern man the one, the true, my treasure from heaven. So that's the name of that chapter, my treasure from heaven. Jesus Christ is the most fulfilling and the most rewarding thing we can, person we can ever have and live for. Like I experienced this through my life. So, so this is not nothing I just talk of out of, just mere talk mm -hmm. is something I experienced through my own personal life. So that's how I know it's real. Because the greatest evidence of a born again person that's born of the Spirit of God is a changed life. And my life has been totally transformed from the inside out. All because of Jesus. Who should read this book? Who should who should be reading this? Is it the alternative youth or is it the people who are reaching the alternative youth? I think I think this book can be read by teenagers, young adults, educators, parents. I, I think this book is a must read for for all people. Mm -hmm. Like 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 it's 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 it has such a simplicity to where, you know, even young teens can can grab it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 an easy read. It's a good read, and and it's 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 not so lengthy to where you read it and you you burned out. It's like it's 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 good. You know, I I believe that I definitely want alternative kids and youth period like young adults mm -hmm. to read this book because I believe that it can encourage their heart and impact their life if. They, they are open to what it says because it's going to point them to the scriptures and it's going to you know point them to Christ and it will show them why they do the things they do. If they want to know why they do what they do, this book lines up with the word of God. Where can people find this book? I'm actually still working towards that. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually just got the books about three days ago. Okay. But, but... If if a person wanted to purchase a book, um, they can contact me through um, Instagram or LinkedIn or or uh, even Facebook, mm -hmm. and I uh, also always point people to uh, the Zelle app, you know, because with the Zelle app, it's you know it's it's a good app, you know, it's mm -hmm. you know protected by the banks and it's a very good resource to use if people wanted to you know make a payment and purchase the book. Okay. And, it, and, and they can inbox me, message me, and, you know, I can work out, you know, the drop off or if I have to mail them or whatever I need to do, I'll make sure that I get them, get them the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where can people find you online or how can they reach you? Um, they can reach me um, through email. Uh, that's uh, avwooder1 at gmail.com. You know, and as well, like I said, they could give me um, at um, Instagram, avwooder. They could give me at um, LinkedIn. Or or at Facebook, mm -hmm. yeah. And those are all they're on the back of the book or inside. Yeah, it's on the inside. Yeah, yeah it's on the inside of the book. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for listening to It's Larry G Radio, a podcast centered around story, motivation, and learning. I hope you enjoyed hearing this story, and I hope it motivated you or you learned something new. If you'd like more information about our guests or their work, check the show notes. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please email me at itslarrygcreations at gmail.com. Until next time, I'm Larry G, and you can believe that.